Welcome to the Life Pro Podcast, where today I have the pleasure of having Raymond Norman, who was not only my first guest, but also the last guest of the year. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, Ray, you are going to interview me today. Um, I felt it was kind of special for us to kind of go full circle as my first guest and my last guest of the year. So uh, how are you doing today, Ray? You ready for this? I am as ready as I will be. Thanks for the honor. Yeah, and I, I, I thought that you were like such a great first guest. And, you know, like from start from the start of it, like, you know, in the beginning, I really didn't know what I was doing with podcasting. And I was like, I was just trying to figure it out. I didn't know where it would take me. I didn't know why I was doing it. Um, but everything just kind of came together at the end for me. And uh, it was it was quite exciting to be able to put this on and see the response and all the, the following and feedback I got from friends and family and and everybody out there. So it, it was a truly a great experience for me. So without further ado, why don't you get started? Sure. Well, I want to first say thank you so much for all that you've provided us, you know, the listeners and also the guests on the show. Um, you know, you've done a great job of asking us like why we got into what we got into, you know, our highlights, things that have been difficult for us and our experiences throughout this journey. So I want to use today as an opportunity to really turn the tables and uh, make you a guest on your own show. Right. Um, so, you know, you started this about a year ago. What was your motivation to start this podcast? You know, I've always... There's a, there's a few things, you know, um, as you know, well, like I lost my mom about four years ago and, you know, mm -hmm. she really was the backbone of the family and she was really my backbone. She was my rock. She was my everything. You know, any, any time I, I had, a, I had a problem or an issue with something like I would go to her, like she was, she was so knowledgeable and so smart. And if, if she didn't know, she was able to figure things out. And it really made me think like, you know, it's, I was really special to have somebody, um, that I could turn to in situations like that. And it made me think like, you know, not everybody has such a resource and a lot of things that we have to deal with in life um, are, might be unexpected and we don't know how to deal with them. And there's no, no real like operations manual of what to do. Um, so I thought, why not put out some content out there where we can educate the world about issues, issues that we all go through um, as we grow up and why not try to get ahead of these issues? Why not try to better our lives or better ourselves to a point where we're set up to do with these anything that comes our way? And um, having to deal with something catastrophic, like unexpectedly losing my mom at a you know she was a very young lady. She was only sixty five years old. Yeah. Um, she was dealing with heart issues all her life, but we never expected to get to a point where you know she wouldn't make it. You know, I could never fathom being without her at, at this age of my life. And, you know, the big, where it hit me the most was my children and like not having that same special relationship with her growing up as I did, you know, I, it was something that I, I was, that I wanted to also provide for them, like, you know, be able to provide that knowledge and foundation um, so they can have a better life. So that's where I came up with the Life Pro podcast. And, you know, I thought about, you know, I really didn't know how long I was going to do it. Um, I, you know, I, I thought about maybe writing a book one day and all that might still happen, but you know, we, we, I gave myself, I committed to doing 50 episodes and, um, you know, there, I, I faced my own challenges and kind of developing this and, and building it, but, you know, I, I figured it out and I, I truly, truly from every single guest I've had, I, I took away at least like one golden nugget that really helped me improve myself and improve my life. And uh, I hope I did that for my listeners. Oh, I'm sure you've helped a lot of people who have tuned into what you have said and what your listeners, uh, what your guests have brought yeah. to the table. Uh, you mentioned that you had some challenges in the, in the creation and the doing this podcast would you mind sharing some of the challenges that you experienced during this journey well you know building the right process right building the right process finding the right people making sure that they're engaging um obviously learning to keep everybody in line with the topic asking the right questions at the right time um you know and getting really people prepped for for having the right type of conversation but i think it really started out with like uh finding the right guests right because you mm -hmm. wanted to find people that 
mold, like are in the mold of like being able to provide valuable content. Um, and, uh, you know, I was at one point I was like bombarded with the number of people that wanted to be on the show and the number of guest opportunities. So I was like, I was taping a lot of shows and I got really ahead. I was like two, three months ahead in recordings. Um, but it was taking up a lot of my time. So I was kind of neglecting other points in my life. So I had to get to a point where I had to find balance. Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't, I, at one point I did, you know, I was so far ahead that I took a big break from recording and then I got to a point where I need to catch up and do more recordings. And I, I took too much of a break. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, just like anything in life, like you want to kind of find that balance um, between the right amount of fit and like running a podcast, you could spend in, uh, an infinite, infinite amount of time um, promoting it, um, editing it. Like there's so much you can do, but I, you know, I basically blocked off a certain amount of times per week that I was going to work on it. Um, I dedicated a certain amount of time in the week to to meet potential guests and a certain time a week to like record these episodes so you know just really build just like anything in life you just want to kind of build the right system and the right formula and if it works you just want to kind of scale and uh that's that's it took a little bit to figure out that formula and the right questions to ask right and i think what you're saying is a testament to the fact of like when you really enjoy doing something It'll yep. give you that motivation to jump through whatever hurdles you need to jump through to get to where you want to go. Absolutely. If you're on, if you're on the right path in life, whether it's uh, whether it's a relationship, whether it's career, anything really in life, it could just be a hobby. You, you really want to be pulled into it. Like you don't want to have to push yourself uh, to like find the motivation to actually get it done. Like I like every episode I do, like I, I come away like, uh, I excited, like, I can't wait to the mm -hmm. next one, you know? And it's, and it, that was the testament to like, I was really enjoying what I was doing. And I was really enjoying speaking to every single person I talked to and, uh, listening that listening to the passion in their voice about what they believe in and being able to like provide them that platform to put their message out there. I think it was pretty special. Yeah, and I think what you did also that was really nice is that you can tell that there was an openness or receptiveness. You were asking questions with curiosity because you really wanted to learn their yeah. experiences and what they had to offer people. Yeah, and it provided me a lot of growth, right? You know, a lot of these topics, a lot of these things that people talk about, you know, you really have to be open-minded about some of these things, you know, Um and I grew, it's just, some, it's, it, I grew along with like my listeners and, and being able to kind of like learn. So a lot of what mm -hmm. I did, you know, helped me as much as, as my listeners. So I, I was grateful for that. Good. You know, 49 episodes is a lot of episodes. That's yeah. a lot of content, a lot of different people, a lot of different experiences and individual journeys that people have traveled in your experience as can you think about common themes that came out of these 49 episodes? You know, the, the, the funniest thing, I mean, I would say almost half, if not more, um, the common theme that really, really resonated with me with a lot of these guests was intuition. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I, I interviewed a lot of coaches, a lot of professionals like yourself, a lot of authors, you know, and and we discuss the difference between like your intuition, like listening to your intuition, listening to your heart or listening to your mind, right? Like your mind will tell you one thing, but your intuition will tell you something else. And sometimes like our brain tells us that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Why? Why do I feel like I should be doing this other action? Like, why is my intuition telling me something different than my mind is? And it takes it takes us a while to figure out, like most of the time, if not always, our mm -hmm. intuition is correct, mm -hmm. even when it doesn't make sense. Um, another common theme is the is the universe. Like, you know, you and I had a conversation offline, like sometimes like if you change your perspective on 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 what happens to us, instead of thinking what happens to us, what's happening, it's happening for us. So mm -hmm. when we feel like everything's going wrong, there's a reason for it, right? There's a reason mm -hmm. why we're going through all this thing. And if you really believe in it, right? Like it, it really serves to be true many times. It's like, and, and having that mental perspective, having that positivity, like 
manifesting the positive. These these are all like themes that were just really common um, in all of my conversations and most of my conversations. And um, being able to have that mentality and shift your mindset to, to believe these things really actually helps. And that's really was my biggest takeaway. Yeah. And I know you, so I know what you mean, but I just want to clarify for people who are listening who may not know you personally, when you're saying that the world works for you, um, Omi does not mean that if you're going through a hard time, he's not diminishing or discounting what you're going through. It's Absolutely very important not. to acknowledge yeah. it, but understand yeah. in the bigger picture, if you have this mindset that this can actually be helping and improving your life in some way, it actually does help promote resilience yeah. and an ability to bounce back from whatever adversity. That's absolutely, on. absolutely. It's, it's it's all of this comes down to like a shift of mindset, right? And correct, and and being present in the moment. Obviously, acknowledging your feelings and being able to express your feelings. You know, right. it's okay if you're going through a traumatic event. It's okay to express your feelings. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be angry. You have to let those emotions out. Where where you have problems is when you don't express your emotions. And that's something we talk about in episode two with Tiffany Mayberry. And we'll get to all the all my February episodes in a minute. But like really, that was one of the first episodes where we talk about like, hey, you know, like she went through a lot, she went through a tough time in life. She had some difficult moments. And she realized that she needs to kind of express those things and like mm -hmm. put them out there and make sure that she's, you know, communicating those things to herself and to other people that she's upset at. And, uh, you know, really helped her kind of change the world. And now she's coaching people to do the same thing. So I was I was moved by by that. And it goes back to what you're saying. It's like, hey, you need to feel your feelings, but you have to understand, like, uh, whatever you're going through, there's a path forward. Like, you know what I mean? there's always ways to go through it and whatever you've going going through is like you're not alone other people have been through the same thing and you're going to get through it it's it's about shifting your mindset and being putting yourself in a position to recover and putting yourself in a position to to be better that's beautiful and i think one of the unique aspects of your podcast is you basically brought 49 different people on to talk about the same thing in very different ways yeah you know i think that that's a, there's an art to that to be able to look at something from different perspectives because each person will resonate differently with different presentations. Absolutely. And you know, those, uh, uh, the, the whole point was to be able to have people with different perspectives and different aspects of life, but you're absolutely right. Or right. That a lot of those actually became connected. They all kind of work mm -hmm. together. Right. And that's, that's kind of like, you know, a, a big takeaway for me as well is like, you know, it's, it's not simple. Life is not simple. Like there's, there's going to be many different issues, many things, and you, you have to deal with them one at a time. And then, you know, it compounds to like having a better life. Right. And you, you're not, if you feel like you have a lot of problems, you're not alone and you can't fix it in one day. It takes work. It takes time. And it takes like resilience and confidence and, all those things required, all these things that we've talked about through the, the first 49 episodes here. And, uh, you know, that that's all we can do. Just get a little bit better every day, you know, whether it's internally or externally helping other people like uh, it's it's all about it's it's all about a, a, a accumulating. It's all about compound interest, you know, like increasing <laughs> just a little percentage, a little bit every day increases a lot in the long term. Yeah, I'd like to think that the more we go through life, the more wisdom we're acquiring through our experiences. Yeah. And if you kind of view life in that way, that we're just in the business of acquiring more information to make our lives better, yeah, then, you know, that enables us to become better, you know, partners, parents, friends, coworkers, employer, employers, employees, like we can just connect with people better with the information that we're receiving. Yeah, you absolutely. You mentioned uh, the second episode that was one that really resonated with you with yeah. Tiffany Mayberry. Are there any other episodes that really stuck out to you that you'd like to talk about? Well, yeah, there's a ton. And I'll I'll try to touch on like at least the ones that really, really like, you know, when I'm looking back, I mean, every single guest was special to me and every single guest really brought so much of their a different aspect and experiences in life and was able to kind of help us 
you know, get to the point that we're looking to to help people improve lives. But, you know, some of the ones that really like resonated, obviously, episode one with you, you know, childhood development, like really like to just think about it. Like, and you, we talked about in our episode, like from from like, I think we talked about age three to age eight are such impressionable points in our lives where like we're mm. really like sponges and programming ourselves. And as young parents, like we have to understand how important our roles are in the growth of our kids and their future. And like really starts with like the right foundation, like building a house, like building a podcast, like, you know, you build that foundation first and and you help me kind of set a good foundation for the rest of the the season and the episode. So I, I, I thank you for that. And that, that episode was, was special to me. Um, then we go into like uh, episode three, Barry Bridges, you know, he, um, I'm not sure if I did a great job in that, in that episode myself, but like sleeping better at night, you know, mm -hmm. like it really helped me like start. It was really the beginning points of like understanding that in order for you to have a better life, in order for you to have better relationships with other people, better career, it really starts with taking care of yourself. And that means like getting enough sleep, eating properly, getting exercise, having the right mindset, the clarity, like all that, those are like building blocks and sleep is a, is a fundamental building block building block of our not only mental health but our physical health right. um so that was a big point that resonated with me and then episode five rebecca shocker um interesting story with her she actually interviewed for a job with me a couple of years ago and then she became a uh, a health coach and I was just kind of a life coach and I was kind of following her path in life and you know so when I started a podcast I definitely reached out to her because she actually went through a difficult life. I think she has like four kids and she's uh, divorced and she had, you know, huge problems with the ex-husband and she was going through a, a, a lot of problems. And, you know, she realized that she needs to kind of love herself more, that she needs to start, mm -hmm. you know, really going back to what we said, it's like, you can't have better relationships with other people unless you have better relationship with yourself. It starts with you. It starts within mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, a bunch of people call me like uh, texting me that they love themselves more, you know, as a joke, but I, you know, really like it really the episode, I think kind of like uh, resonated with a lot of people and, and got people talking yeah. because, you know, loving yourself, like, I don't think most people really think about it, right? They don't really think about I'm going to love myself more. You just think, you know, you just, right. it is what it is. You, you don't, yeah. It doesn't fluctuate. Right. <laughs> so, um, and then, uh, you know, going to the same, like nutrition was, you know, I had a lot of nutritionists like reach out, like to get on the show, like, but we talked, you know, I had a couple people, um, Aaron Manning, who was very, you know, very, uh, uh, passionate about health and fitness. Um, then I talked to Alex Udim, who's, I think he lost, uh, God, what did he lose? Like 250 pounds or something ridiculous. Wow. Like he yeah. lost the uh, something ridiculous that like he, he really transformed his life. And it started with it just, you know, just like my show, it was like a commitment, right? Like mm -hmm. anything in life, if you want it bad enough, you can achieve it. Like you're going to hit roadblocks, but you have to keep going. Right. And if you don't achieve those goals, all that means is you didn't want it bad enough. Like you did it, like you wanted that sandwich more your stat sandwich in front of you was more important than losing weight you know what i mean like it's it's uh really like it was you know really stood out the power of the mind the power of being able to achieve like a move mountains like if if that's what you want to do you can do it and uh mm -hmm. uh i think that was a theme that kind of resonated through other episodes um episode 10 nancy accomando tapping into in intuition um you know, this is, I think this was the beginning of like the first time we started talking about intuition and uh, mm -hmm. really like getting yourself into a mindset, like your intuition is always there, but what happens is sometimes we turn the volume down on it, right? We don't listen to it and we don't like, we don't recognize it, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it might be a feeling that we get, but we don't. Like we have to get ourselves into a mindset where we're like, we're asking our intuition, like, Hey, what should I do? And then once you ask your intuition, what I should do, you got to listen to it. Even if it doesn't make sense to you, even if your heart or your mind tells you don't do it, mm -hmm. you have to listen to it and then not questioning it. Exactly. Along the same point is not questioning it. So um, I think that this episode was impactful for me because it started like that 
it started that thing for me. It started like, it started the the engine on like being able to tap more, tap into my intuition. And I go through my peaks and valleys on that. I go through times where I don't, sure. and don't, don't listen to my intuition, but it really starts with having the right mindset and the clarity to be able to kind of listen to your intuition. Mm-hmm. Um, and then episode 11, uh, Mary Breast Shudder. Uh, so we talked about alcohol, which, I, you know, like nobody really likes to be told not to drink alcohol. Like I I came to find that out because, you know, like, I don't think, I think a lot of people might have like skipped this episode because like they just didn't want to hear it. Like, mm-hmm. I think everybody knows like what alcohol does to their body. And the point of the episode was not to tell people to stop drinking. The point of the episode is, was to make you aware of what you were doing to yourself. And then you make a decision on your own. Um, Mm. You know, I'm not a big drinker myself, but mostly because when I drink, like I don't feel good afterwards. I might feel good for a few minutes, but mm-hmm. I don't, you know, you know, we talked about how it affects your sleep and like how it messes up your day. And like, really, like if we want to be optimal in performance, like we want to be careful about what we put in our bodies or at least mm-hmm. understand what we're doing to ourselves and then make, make the right decision, you know? Yeah. So we got, I got a bunch more. Um, episode 13, we talked about uh, work-life balance with Brianna Burroughs and, you know, uh, probably this was around the time where I was like, all right, this this podcast is taking a lot of my time. I need to focus on my career. I need to focus on my family and my wife, my hobbies, this and that and friends, you know, so I think like that really helped like start spur like, OK, I could still do the podcast. I enjoy doing the podcast, but I could find that right balance between like time blocks, you know, and mm-hmm. I think the old, you know, especially the older you get and you get you're married, you have kids uh different goals and with your career and um it's easy to get trapped into just working really hard or not working hard enough or um you know you really have to take that time to just be very aware of of what your work-life balance is and keep tweaking things and you know to get point where it's uh it's perfect for you um episode 15 claire wheeler very special lady man she's she her she dedicated her her life to to teach kids entrepreneurship and teach mm-hmm. kids basically all the things that were not taught in school and it really made me think like and i had a lot of conversations with friends about you know like our kids go to schools and they're really not taught like i don't i don't like i'll ask you this like we took we took history class i mean I, i'm sure history is important right but i I don't remember any of that stuff. Like, I don't No, I hated history. <laughs> I, history was horrible for me. I hated social studies. Yeah. I, it wasn't for me. Like, you know, honestly, in, in high school, there was a small business class that I took. And mm-hmm. it really, it really resonated with me because I could actually, like, I learned things in that class that I've used in, in my life. Like, I had mm-hmm. a small business class in high school. And we like, we we put on like, we learned about business. We actually like, we created a holiday called Best Friends Day, um, which I like to take credit for, but uh, there's some debate there. Um, mm-hmm. And then like, we like promoted it and like, we went through like profit and loss and like, we created distribution channels and like, we did it like. I literally, that was like my first business venture. It was like in high school to do that. And actually that's not true, but that really like really spurred my, my interest in entrepreneurship. And yeah, it, you know, this really sparked a conversation, like whose responsibility is it to teach these things to our kids? Is it our schools? Is it us as parents? And what can we do as parents to help set, set up the foundation for the future of our kids? You know? So Mm -hmm. I, I thought that that was that was an interesting conversation. What what do you what what is your opinion on that? What do you think that our kids need to be taught? I think our kids need to be taught how to live well, and the most influential source for that is the parents. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a different perspective. Like it's not I'm teaching you do this. You are by nature teaching your kids based on what you're doing. 
So I think as long as you're doing life well, you know, you're yeah. paying attention to yourself, you're being self-aware, you're being caring, considerate, kind, and respectful. Yeah. Like kids will learn that simply by your implementing them in your daily life. Like they will feel the effects of it. They will like it. It yeah. will become familiar to them. And we all know we tend to gravitate towards what's familiar. Therefore, that's what they'll be drawn to. It'll be great for their self-esteem, self-worth, self-confidence. And you're basically training kids to be, yeah. you know, great human beings. I mean, we train kids basically to be like us. Like, that's just the reality of it. You yeah. know, parents who are listening to this, if you want your kid to be a certain way, like you be that way. And you better believe that they're more likely to turn into that. But it's so hard. You know, I know, I, I guess what we're saying is actions speak louder than wor words, right? Yeah. And um, it's as a parent, it's so hard. It, you have, it requires a lot of patience, especially when the kids get older, like they're, they're more influenced by their friends than they are by their parents. Like when they enter their preteen and teenage years mm -hmm. and it, it it's really challenging. And I, you know, it as a parent, like, you know, that if you yell and scream, it's not going to help. I mean, but you get their attention. So you do it. Well, what's interesting about that is that I've noticed that when, when parents have children, a lot of their own childhood issues come up. So to the extent that the parents are actually processing parts of their own life at that stage of life, I think there could be a lot of traction. So for example, you know, people who are much more in touch with their teenage development and what they went through, processing traumas and difficulties that they experienced, I think it will be easier for them to tolerate the ambiguities and uncertainties that come up with their own children. Yeah. Because now you no longer will you be getting unconsciously triggered by what your kids are doing. Mm -hmm. Instead, you can understand it, you can relate to it, and you can approach it in a much more uh, trusting manner. Whereas yeah. you feel like you can trust your kid and if they fall, that's okay. Like they'll learn how to get up. You'll be okay. They'll yeah. be okay. And if they're not, eventually they will learn to be okay. I think when parents trust their kids and not just saying they trust them, but like actually emotionally and mentally trust them, the yeah. kids can feel it. And it really creates an environment for them to be their authentic selves. Mm. And what's better, what better antidote for that? during the teenagers yeah. in particular when you're trying to figure out you know who am i where do i belong where do i fit in it's just yeah. better for everybody i think i mean it's it's challenging because a lot of the things that we're yelling at them for we're yelling at them because it's for their, we think it's for their own good it's like hey do your homework hey go take a shower hey <laughs> do these things that we think are better for you but you won't do them and i think unconsciously even in addition to what you're saying, what could be happening is that our, the kids are actually doing something that they did when they were a kid. So like, if I see my kid acting out, maybe the reason why it could be pissing me off is because I did that shit myself yeah. when I was younger and I'm yeah. just reacting the way I was reacted to. You know, like right. maybe my parents didn't want to hear me. They just were pushing yeah. me away. And so I thought that is the way to handle such a situation and therefore now i am transferring it onto my kid yeah whereas if you do the work on yourself and you really recognize where you're coming from and exactly what you've been through then the next time your kid does that you're you will probably be less threatened and therefore less anxious and yeah. therefore more stable and confident when it comes to approaching whatever it is that they're presenting with to you yeah yeah i agree with that it's hard. I mean, I think I and I think we all agree with that. Like listening to this, it's like, yeah, Ray's right about this. But you know, implementation is difficult, but it starts like, you know, and it, it's it may not be like a switch. Like you might not be able to do this right away. It no. takes time. But like you just it's you know, it, I mean, I don't think work. people people don't normally think this way. Yeah. I'm just yeah. giving people a little bit of a nugget yeah. <laughs> of like yeah. what happens. Well, um, let me ask, they, yeah. Let me ask you a question here. Like do you feel that everybody has had some sort of childhood trauma? Trauma, we just have different degrees of it. I think so. And I and think that, it looks different. Yeah. And that like blows my mind. Like really? we're all like like and I've had discussions with, with guests, and it's like 
and I'm like, because they, you know, authors, t- I've t- I have certain authors, they're always, everyone's talking about recovery, like recovering. It's like, mm-hmm. what are we all, are, are we all recovering from some sort of trauma? And it's like, that's crazy <laughs> to my mind that we're yeah. all dealing with some shit. <laughs> like we're all dealing with shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, I mean, imagine if the world, if everybody in the world were dealing with their feelings and the traumatic incidents that they've experienced. I think the world would be a lot better of a place because if you see yeah. a lot of people are like displacing their anger and aggression on the wrong people, you know, yeah. you're angry at one person and you don't even realize it and you totally torch someone else and you're like, yeah. you know what, F you. And the person's yeah. like, okay, what did I do? And then it just becomes this whole, yeah. like the blaming game and look, yeah. no one's perfect, but the disproportional reactions I yeah. think is what really gives it away that like, oh, there's probably something going on here that you can yeah. benefit from looking at. And that's another thing I learned. There's no like magic pill for all of this stuff, right? Like whether we're going to therapy or we're doing meditation or we're doing journaling or all these things, these are the tools that make things a little bit better that help us like express ourselves and communicate and be aware of like, Hey, I'm feeling shitty right now. And this is why, okay, this is why I feel shitty. Now, what do I do about this? Do I just forget about it? Do I try to change it? Do I like, you know, try to cope with it? Like there's so many ways, like it's, there's no simple answers. It's just all we can do, all we can do. And all of these themes that we're talking about, whether it's better sleep, better eating, like these are just way, like little ways things can get just a little bit better. And that's all you can be in, and celebrate those things. Celebrate 100%, 100%. them. So, and, and so further to your question. So let, let's get through these. These I have a few more episodes to talk about. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to get through it pretty quick. Uh, Roberta Mosato. Uh, she was remarkable. She, I mean, she's, she's a lady that grew up in Italy, moved to the UK. And one day she decided to just leave and go on a trip for three months on her own to the foreign countries and with, you know, very little money. And she just writes about all of her experiences and she's super like unfiltered and raw in her book. Um, and really like it, it was called the book called, it's called universe. I trust you. I had a chance to to listen to it, um, and I it really not, not not only her conversation, but really her book also had a big impact. Like just like just sometimes you just gotta relinquish to the universe. You just gotta like trust that everything will happen for you, and and you'll meet the and when you when you meet the right people that will impact the rest of your life. Like one person meeting one person. We talked about this before the episode. You don't know like one person can you can run into one person they could just change the rest of your life and. Mm-hmm. And uh, being open, like really to like experiences and things that happen to you. And like, really, this is where we started really talking about more talking about like, you know, when when these horrible things happen to you or even good things happen to you, like it's like it's the universe really like that telling you like this is happening for you and not to you. Right. And if you mm-hmm. have that mental mentality and mindset, like when things go wrong, then it helps you kind of get through these things and, and mm-hmm. recover and grow and do all these other things. Um, episode 19 with Beck Antonucci, uh, that that kind of turned into like a mini coach coaching session for me. So she was she was she kind of turned things around on me and like we you know she kind of made me like commit to like action and it really we talked about the fear of failure is a as a is a reason why people for you know re- are reluctant to take action because they don't want to fail and like building that confidence and self-esteem um to be able to like take these risks in life because like at the end of the day life is short like you got to have that trust in yourself mm-hmm. to make to make those changes required to, to have a better life. Um, and then further to that point, like segue to episode 27, Kelvin, uh, Kevin Palmieri, the, the guy was like, you know, he talked about his highs and lows in life to a point where like, you know, that he had zero confidence and he like worked on self to build up his confidence. And like, you know, you would have never thought the guy lacks confidence. He was so confident. He runs a very successful podcast himself. And he really kind of expi- inspired me, like having that mindset, like, you know what I mean? Like you got to demand respect. Like when mm-hmm. you demand respect, you if you walk into a room with like authority, like you own the place, like people will give you that respect mm-hmm. because you're demanding it, right? Like, and it starts with having your own self-confidence and self-esteem and building that d- demand from uh from the people around you and that also that confidence you know in anything you know we talked about self-trust 
uh, helps you kind of be more successful in your career, your relationships and, and everything, right? Like you have, you have to be able to put yourself out there, you know, um, episode 29, Terry Tucker, probably top two, if not my favorite guest. Um, I mean, he was an NCAA player. He played against Michael Jordan. So I'm a big basketball fan. That was inspirational mm-hmm. for me. And then he was, you know, he was on a SWAT team. Um, he coached, he, he was, he's been battling cancer for 12 years. He had his legs amputated like this guy and he's still fighting. He's still working. He's still trying to help. He's, you know, he wrote, he wrote a book. He's like, he was so inspirational. You know what I mean? Like imagine like not a lot of people can go through life having to like battle cancer for 12 years, get your legs amputated and just like have this as much like confidence as much as like will to like fight, still fight. Like he's going to fight and he's, he's not going to lay down and, and die he's gonna he's gonna make sure that he impacts the world he, he tells his story and he does everything he can to inspire everybody else mm-hmm. um and we talked about like you know we talked about like being older and uh suffering like and we, t- we talked about childhood drama which uh episode 30 andrea lopez andrea lopez sorry i messed mm-hmm. up her name during the show and then she corrected me after i andrea i'm sorry <laughs> and uh so she talked about suffering like she had a very difficult childhood to a point where she had to like cut off her mom like because it mm-hmm. was impacting her so much and she had to she literally just had to run away and that gave her a fresh start and sometimes that's what we have to do we have to get away from these toxic relationships but like you know it gave me a perspective like sometimes we have to go through shit we have to suffer to like really appreciate, to really like, you know, we have to dig that hole in life to be able to come out and have a better life. And Mm -hmm. I I don't, I mean, I understand the psychology behind it. I don't know if I a hundred percent understand the psychology behind it, but it's like, it's pretty amazing. Like the power of suffering. And the only thing that I could relate to, like only example that I can give right now is that like, I lived in New York for three years and like, we don't appreciate LA weather until we live outside of LA. Like Mm -hmm. everybody complains and it's, it's, this is not really suffering, but like it gives me like a perspective kind of an apples to oranges type suffering. But it was, it was like, you have to experience something that's difficult in order to really appreciate like when you have it good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think we just get used to. Yeah. We're we're creatures that have it it becomes ordinary and that happens in relationships too. Like, you know, uh, I think we take our, our, our relationships for granted because they're always there, Mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, maybe I took my mom, my relationship with my mom for granted because she was always there. And when she wasn't, Mm -hmm. I was like, God, man, I never told her how much I appreciated her. You know what I mean? Like, it's like now, now because I don't have her, I appreciate her more. Like, Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That's crazy, right? Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, we take it for granted. We're we're prone to taking things for granted when we're always, we have access to it. Yeah. And then there was uh, Kaylee Zaytuni, episode 31. She she was diagnosed with MS at a very young age. And Mm -hmm. she she had a very difficult life. She, uh, she had, I think, her her fiancé, she had a fiancé that that passed away in his sleep, like, unexpectedly. So, Mm -hmm. um, and we talked about the power of the mind. She was able to cure her MS, not with drugs, but with, with her mind. Like yeah. she really, it was like a shift in mindset. And going back to what you're saying is like a lot of this stuff that we talked about, like you really have to have an open mind. Like it, it, I'm sure a lot of people are like, oh, that's bullshit. Like she can't do that, but she did. Mm-hmm. It happened, you know, and she, now she teaches other people to cure illness with the power of the mind. And, and this was really like one of the episode that really like, you know, we, a lot of this stuff was like, you know, mindset, 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 but like, dude, like you can do anything <laughs> with your mind. Like if you truly believe that nothing's yeah. going to, nothing's going to get in your way. Yeah. You know? no, that's true. Just hope some pharmaceutical companies don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> <Come after you. laughs> hey, now we're not telling anybody not to take drugs. No, but, you'll well, still have your business. <laughs> yeah, no, you'll be all right. But you know what? Yeah. Like, really comes down to it is it's just like opening your mind really like right. just being open to these changes in the world and like uh 
episode 32, Emily Todd, like she had like a successful career in, in New York, worked her ass off. Um, something I could definitely relate to. I, I worked in the corporate world in New York in the early 2000s, worked really hard to get a promotion um, and realized, hey, she, she was doing all that to appease her parents. Like she literally, she got the promotion. She was so excited to call her dad and say, dad, I got the promotion. And her dad was like, good job. And it and that was mm -hmm. it. It was like anticlimactic. Like everything she'd worked for, yeah. that she thought she worked for, it didn't matter. You know what I mean? And then she she literally like during COVID, she dropped everything. She quit her job. She moved to Mexico City, decided to become a coach and just like focus on herself, like focus on herself and focus on like helping other people. Uh, we talked about analysis paralysis, which I do a lot of times. Like I, I take sometimes I take forever to make a decision. Um, and that happens like the, these huge decisions in life, like it's difficult for us to make. So then we get to a point, we just don't make the decision mm -hmm. and we just, it becomes paralyzing. And, um, I think it really helped. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't think that for me, like, I mean, it, I've, I've been through it. I've been through that process where it, it, I've had to like go through the pains of like making decisions like took me forever so mm -hmm. i'm better at it now and i and i i i'm but huge decisions are always difficult for me too mm -hmm. and i've been a victim of it so but uh so that that episode really resonated with me um chrissy fredo 36 we talked about power of manifestation like that was a common theme along a lot of a lot of these things episode 37 kelly fabiano well uh, dealing with death uh so you know we talked about the reason why yeah, I created this podcast and, you know, she, she coaches, she is, uh, she coaches people that are dying and she helps them kind of like transition. Right. So she wasn't, she doesn't coach the the loved ones so much, but like more about the person helps them like be at peace with going and really commendable what she does. Like I, I, I could never, I could never be around that death. I like try to run away from it, but um, yeah that episode really resonated with me, like for her to have that power. And like, you know, she was raw with us and she told us she cries, like she cries every time she loses a patient. Like it's, it's, it's hard. It's really yeah. hard on her. Um, yeah. And then my, the last one I'm going to talk about is Alessandra Veronesi elevating her, our relationships. Uh, I, we had a great conversation, probably again, top two. Um, and, you know, I read, I, I listened to her book actually after uh, our podcast and, you know, I told her, I, I told her that like, I wish I had read this book when I was younger because it was really mm -hmm. about developing relationships and like, it, and, and going back to like really all of this full circle, like it all starts with like having a better relationship with yourself. Right. And I know that you, uh, you, you and I have talked about this offline and, you know, you've really worked on yourself, like building that relationship with yourself. And um, you've talked about how much you've changed in the last year since our first episode and really mm -hmm. like focusing on yourself and focusing, putting yourself in the position where, you know, Alessandra also had a similar situation um, as Emily. She, she also worked in New York, high paying job. Uh, very successful and she's like I gotta focus on me so she left and she's she's a coach now she's a successful author she's pumping out books and she's really happy and she's like and I asked her you know when I got off the the I don't know if I asked her on the podcast but I asked her after the pod like are you do you feel like you're on the right path in life and she's like absolutely like I I'm 100% confident I'm on the right path in life and I'm like that's where I want to be like I want to be able to feel that I'm on the right path because the last mm. few years before this podcast, and uh, I can confidently say that now, like as we are speaking, um, I feel like I'm on the right path in life. I'm doing the right things, uh, and I'm learning to be patient because, you know, it's not something that I've had to deal with being patient. Like I, I'm a kind mm. of like a, I'm I'm a victim of our society that I want now, want to do these things now and get it all done. Sure, but I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm learning to be patient. Um, and uh, you know, we've had some great episodes. You know, we we've talked about a lot of different things outside of these these ones that I mentioned. You know, we talked about work, how important the important importance importance of working out, the importance of drinking right enough water, the correct water. Mm -hmm. 
we talked about building a business. We talk about personal finance, pow power of uh, laughter, what's was one of our recent episodes, the power of music. And we've leveraged so many authors, experts, coaches. And the real common theme, you know, of all my guests is every single person I'm, I talk to, it's their job, including yourself, mm -hmm. to help improve other people's lives. And, you know, I think that that's so respectful, right? Like if, it, there's nothing more powerful in this world than having an occupation that actually is dedicated to helping people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, it's really like the culmination of, of the, this last year's uh, last year's 50 episodes now with this episode. Yeah. Um, and I think that uh, it's one of the things I got to mention is it's quite ironic because we were taping this uh, mid-December, but it, it's actually going to launch on January 1st, which, oh, is, nice. which is New Year's, which is also my mom's birthday. So oh. I think that's kind of that's uh, ironic a little bit for me. Um, I don't, maybe ironic is not the word. But maybe appropriate is the right word. Yeah. Um, and it's also a time where many people actually start, you know, with these new year's resolutions that most of us don't follow through with. But, you know, I think that like we had, we had an episode every week for the last 50 weeks and every episode was like, the intention was this is a new year's resolution every day, like every day of your life is your opportunity to like resolve to be better. And mm -hmm. it does, you don't have to wait till New Year's every year, like mm -hmm. just every day, just be conscious, just be mind, have that mindset, have that like awareness, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes you might need a therapist. Sometimes you might need to read a good book that that's right. going to change your life. Sometimes you just might need to just run into the right person or be influenced by the right person. And sometimes it just comes within and it just, it just happens. And I think to a point you mentioned earlier, it's just about learning how to be present and yep. not trying to control everything. Just go through your life and trust that the universe is actually working for you, that the people who are supposed to come in your path will, and yep. there's nothing you can do to get in the way. Right, absolutely. Just And we talked, we had an episode on the flow. Sometimes you just have to go with the flow. Don't fight it. Okay. And um, a lot of, you know, I think a book that we talked about a lot um, that a lot of guests were influenced by. I, I would say that I was influenced by was the power of now and really, you know, feeling the feelings of the past, learning, learning from the past, but not living in the past, living in the mm -hmm. moment, not worrying about the future, not worrying what could happen. Just, just like dealing with things as they come to you and having right. that mindset of like now, like now is what matters most. Um, right. I think that was... Totally. A big, you know, I mean, the biggest takeaways I had, uh, yeah, being true to yourself and we must, mm -hmm. we must not like act on, on the mold of society or what our parents or friends tell us. Like we need to really look within and, and do what it, it, our intuition tells us to do and act on, act on our intuition, act on like, and, and if you make a mistake, it's move on, like move on from that, like learn from that. Um, but we, we have to take care of ourselves before we can take care of others. Like there's no compromise there. You can't, right. you can't, you can't have a good relationship with somebody else unless you have a good relationship with you, with, with yourself. Um, and you can't fully love somebody until, until you've gotten to a point where you fully love yourself and constantly in life, we're uh, faced with uh, having to make these decisions. Some, some are, some are small, some are large, but even the smallest of decisions in our lives can potentially change the trajectory of our whole life, you know? And, and that's, that's important for us to be open to that and to be open and, and uh, you know, and being open to to meeting people, open to like conversations. And one of the things that like really helped me on the, you know, part of the reason, one of the reasons I did this podcast is I, I wasn't good at like engaging people. I wasn't good in talking to people. And like mm. this, this platform helped me to work on myself, work on my ability to engage and like yeah. get, get things out of people. I know that's what you do for a living and it's very commendable. Um, but I didn't know how to do that. So this really helped me like really just get to that point where it's like, Hey, I can find something in somebody and bring it out in them. And that was it. I mean, they, it was, it was already 
willing to come out, but, you know, being able to kind of get steer the ship on the right, in the right direction and have that engaging conversation. That's, that's interesting to other people. Mm -hmm. Um, We, uh, anything could happen at any time, you know, like we have to like carpe diem, like we could be, we could be crossing the street, get hit by a bus. So, you know, we could be diagnosed with a terminal disease. Like we don't know Mm -hmm. these things, like it's not in our control. So, you know, every day, Thank whatever you believe in, whether it's God or anything, whatever it is, just like be grateful, be thankful. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to intuition, intuition, like intuition, that's that's really like if I had to use one word to like describe everything that I've learned, it's <laughs> intuition. And it's crazy to say that because I would have never thought that that's what would have been like the the takeaway in all of this. Um, yeah. But, you know, we talked about the power of now, like don't be don't dwell over what's happened, like trust in the universe. Um, yeah. And we, you talked about, it doesn't mean like, don't feel your feelings. It doesn't mean like ignore, like put it out, like make sure you're expressing yourself, make sure you're communicating to yourself and to other people. Um, but, you know, if, every, if you really come from the mindset of like everything happens for a reason, whether it's good or bad, then it mm-hmm. really helps you kind of like move forward and like not, not to worry about anything, not worry, you know, don't worry about anything. You don't have a power to change. Like really like mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like, was this my fault? Okay. If it was, I'm going to correct it. It won't do it again. If it wasn't my fault, if I have no power over this, I shouldn't like dwell over it. You know what I mean? Like feel my feelings and move on, live and live your authentic self, make the most out of every day and be the best person you can. And everything will happen for you, good for you that it's meant to happen. And all the good will come your way. Like put that yeah. positivity out there manifestation of like whatever you want in your life it's super powerful um Mm. and it all starts with the intuition so that's awesome you know there's so much information that you've acquired and that you've disseminated to people through the life flow podcast what's making you stop at this point well i think it's time for a little bit of a break um okay and the commitment was to do one year of episodes and you know, when I, when I got down to like the last episode, I'm like, God, who would be perfect to Mm -hmm. be on the show with me? And I, I, I really gave it a lot of thought and like, you were really inspirational in the beginning. And, um, you know, you helped me with my first episode and you followed my path and you're always kind of reaching out, telling, telling me how, how, how proud you were of, of what I was doing. And, um, Mm -hmm. you were inspired and, you know, I was, I'm always inspired by what you do on a daily basis. And mm. I've seen, um, I've seen so much that you've, you've changed also with, with your own work on yourself. Um, mm. So I think it was only fitting that we have you on this last season. And I don't know what the future, I mean, I may come back to this. I may write a book and, or this might be the end. I don't know. Maybe I can get you to take over. I don't. Well, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what the we'll see what the universe is in store. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I think what you're saying is really wonderful, and the project you put together is really amazing, and the fact that you had this personal goal for yourself, you had a personal mission out, and you did it, really yeah. just exemplifies that you're practicing what you're preaching. Right. And I think that's very powerful when you actually do what you're saying. Yeah. Um, there's just more integrity to to the message and the communication. Yeah. And that um, was key. That was key. Going back to like what you said, uh, ha- setting the example for for uh, our kids. Well, you know, I, I have to I have to practice what I preach. I have to. Do, and that, that was a big fundamental uh, motivation for this. Right. Like I I spent a lot of time having to like uh, having having to deal with passing of my mother like I use it as inspiration it's like when I'm when I'm suffering like how can I get myself out of this how can I be a better person despite what I had to go through and Mm -hmm. that goes back to what we uh what we're talking about is you know that's all we can do it's like if we're suffering we got a way we got to find a way to come back stronger and better right? right and that it, actually, that was a big testament to what my mom was like. My mom was, you know, you could never tell her she can't do anything. Like she, mm-hmm. she, she, you know, in her mind, she could rule the world. Like she could do anything she sets her mind to. And it's, you know, for a, a Persian lady 
that grew in an environment where it was very male dominant, like it's, it's a testament to who she was like what, and sure. her upbringing and her like strong will in life. And, uh, you know, obviously she battled real hard. Like she, she faced, she faced some tough times in, with her health, but she always fought like to a point where like, you know, we, I thought that she could get through anything, but mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's not what, that's not what was in store for her. Okay. Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, is there anything you wish that I would have asked you that I didn't ask you that you'd like to share the answer to? Um, well, you know, I mean, before we close, uh, before we close, uh, no, I mean, I, I, I pretty much covered everything I wanted to talk about today. And, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's some, some of these ep episodes will resonate with you and some of them may not. Um, but I think overall, like I was very fortunate and lucky to have such amazing guests and such amazing people. Um, and at the end of the day, like I'm grateful for them because without them, there wouldn't have been a show. Um, and a lot of these people write some fantastic books and I'm still catching up on all of these books that you know, I hope to read all of them. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the power of books has always been, uh, huge in my life and this is why we always talk about like everybody's favorite books and this is why maybe maybe one day you'll see a book from me that would be awesome yeah i know you wrote a book <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah very much looking forward to that yeah, yeah when that day comes you know only on behalf of myself the guests and all the listeners uh thank you very much for all the work that you've put through yeah to acquire all this wisdom and information to really help give people nuggets of insight and experience and to learn from each other. Because I think that's what I'm getting was the main impetus for this whole thing is yeah. you wanted to learn, understand, and then disseminate this information to help people live better lives. Yeah, absolutely. So, and so thank you. Well, I thank you for saying that. And I, I thank everybody for listening. And if honestly, if we've impacted anybody even one person if, if we've done our job like and that's that's all we can do right is put out that's this right. put out the best content that we can and hope that like it really impacts the world and uh you know i commend you for what you do for everybody and i commend every single guest that i've had and all they're doing is like if if everybody in life if world was like their job was to make everybody's life better everybody else's life better then imagine you know the world will, will be in a better place absolutely yeah. All right, Ray, thank, thank you so much for this. This was amazing. I had so much fun. You know, I'm not usually a guy that likes to talk. I'm like a guy that likes, likes to interject here and there. So uh -huh. this was definitely kind of outside my comfort zone, but I enjoyed it very much. Oh, good. Me too. Thank you very much for yeah. having me on. Hope to see everybody back at some point. If not, That's right. happy new care. year. Happy new year, everybody. Remember, like, follow, and share. Spread, help okay. us spread the word. All right. Sounds Take great. Care. Bye, Ray. Take care. You too. Bye, Almin.